Whoops. My hand out of the way there. I will uh, <laughs> explain the condition. Here we go again, and hopefully this is the last time over the 40 years how many of these damn things I've put in. Look at this. I'd say the cable's got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so, let's pop it out. Gotta pull some uh, stuff off, and yeah, it's a pain in the arse to pull the rocker molding off, but it's gotta be done. Let's do it. So, first thing we gotta do is get this sill panel off. Rocker molding, whatever you wanna call it. No, how hard is that? A series of screws here and underneath. Anyway, you get the idea. And then after that, how hard is this? Pop off those tens right there. See them? I like a quarter inch snap on socket, especially on that bottom one with a building swivel. And then uh, in this example, I have to pop that mud flap off, and that's just secured with two little plastic clips. And Take these fender bolts here out and we'll have it out. So again, uh, as we progress, that uh, molding is on the ground. It's pretty self-explanatory. A couple seven millimeters on the bottom and some uh, clips on the top that are and act as a retainer and a guide. And then the inner bolts. And in this 1988 car example, keep my finger out of the picture, See where that extension's running? So there's a bolt right there. We'll simply pop him out, and then there'll be another one on the bottom. That's gonna be hard. I don't have a videographer here to follow me or whatever, but uh, anyway, just two bolts to hold that mast in. There would be the cable. Put a wire on him so we can fish him back out, and out we come. Ah, 10 minutes so far. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> and here we can see the uh, fender popped out. And you know, that's pretty self explanatory with all those bolts gone. You needn't take the fender off, just take the bolts out. And then you have to massage the metal a little bit. And like you're putting a, a tire on a rim, I should think is a good analogy to, to get that off. Until, and I just got this hanging on a little pin here, you get your aerial out. And take our wire out, and off we come. Let's get it apart. So this is the old school, and um, a kind of a different type of a mast back in '79. And uh, October of '79 was the build date on this one. Anyway, I've already explained and have drilled out the rivets. These are bigger rivets in the bottom on this style, but they're all the same. Yeah, there's the, the date. Um, and then you can see I put standard hardware in here. You don't really need one here, but, you know, I meant the clips, which really do all the holding. But let's get this open, and uh, hopefully I can get a measurement on the length of that uh, length of that cord for this A-body car. Okay, let's do that. Yes, so that had a good fellow. Huh? I'm going to try and do this. Try is a good word. I've done it so many times, I should be able to do it with my eyes shut. Sorry about that. Anyway, isn't it pretty self-explanatory? Just like everybody else. Pop. Oh, oh around here. <laughs> yep, I grew up with Popeye. All right, and then, voila. So, this one's been apart uh, many times. All right, and this is interesting. I'm going to have to, uh, unlike Popeye the Sailor, eat a little crow here, and here's why. Look it. That's already got the metal spool on it. I've done so many of these. I guess there's no need to take this off, but you, know, you can... All right, get it all the way. You can see that there's that soldered end on there that is in the other video. And what happened is the cable held fine, but where the mast, or this section, threads in, 
Apparently I didn't hunker it down and tighten it and it vibrated loose. So, you know, my bad. That's that's what's wrong. And this is just so effortless to, to extend this. It, it's just like nothing. And, you know, I think what I'm going to do is spray some uh, brake clean on here, on that thread when I get it out, and I'll show you that. And uh, put a little Loctite on it. Because I'm going, what the hell? I mean, that's why I stopped there a second ago. Uh, how can this have compromised? It's a metal cable. I don't even remember, you know, there being a problem. And, and you know... Uh, Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. I mean, uh, this this isn't plastic. I've already been here. I've been there, done that. I hate that cliche. So let's let's look at that and find out exactly what we got here. Hold on. So here's that brass barrel, and I'm not going to be able to get in there to show you, but there's a you can maybe see a thread there, and I'll be damned if that darn thing didn't come right out. Where the hell? There it is. <laughs> see that thread? Can I can I do it? Will you focus? Nope, I guess you won't. There's a... There it is. Good lesson. Tighten them up. I didn't do that. Little tiny microscopic dot, if there is such a thing, of Loctite on there would certainly help matters. I'll have to check the others. I never would have thought of that. There it is. Okay, I've literally done a pull-up on this. Ready to yank it right out of my vice jaw when it's clamped down there very gently aft. But uh, here's the spool, and, and I think it was Michael that po asked the question, hey, how long's that cable? So if you were to go to the hardware and look at all the spools of what we'll call maybe garage door spool cable, there's a whole assortment on the wall, and you get 10 feet of this or 2 feet of that, all different sizes. Anyway, you'll f find this very flexible, easy-going cable the steel cable in that section and it is exactly this one 37 inches long end to end yeah so um yeah give it the pull test i put a little drop of stuff here on this end and we should be golden that's a important little thing to remember i sure had the grease and everything else all Set and happy, and boy, it ran like glass. So I'm thinking, man, I thought I did this one. Getting old, senior moment. Gets worse as you get older, you know. But that's what's going on. Okay, let's get it back in there and check it. Yeah, if this will allow me to zoom in, that's about it before it loses focus. We see that cable. And what I do with the end here. You can see where I'm going. And I'm pulling <clears throat> damn hard. And it's uh, it's passing the test. So again, the, uh, the problem was that the mast... Let's see if I can show you on another one. On the end has a thread. Don't get seasick on me. Can you see them? The threads into that little tiny brass boss. Where you'll solder that in. Now some guys, when they put this cable in here that fits like a glove and you put the flux and the tinning stuff in, you know, it's gone as soon as you hit, the, hit it with the solder. But some guys might want to tamp that, like you crimp a butt connector in a wiring example. Very gentle crimp. If you don't have faith in it, maybe crimp it first. But be careful because if you change the diameter of this, it's not going to go inside those other barrels of that aerial. Watch out. Don't get overzealous or you're going to get caught. And right here is where that thread starts. The end of my fingernail if I had any. Don't you get it though? And you know, another thing, just FYI here, the whole reason for the antenna is right here, you'll see that little brush that always has to come into contact with tube two and three were you to call this part one. In other words, in the aerial and the mast would be the second stage. You might call him 
two and then the right there and then the last one would be three or the outer so in other words the brush is the conductor you know I mean if you hurt that brush can you see them there see the lines call it the very very right of the screen right now can I zoom in I'll call it a brush call it a contact it ever so lightly uh, kind of burrishes that position two part of the mast and goes in and out of there but it's always a, a continuity to give us our aerial and to you know I mean if we don't have a conductor from stage one to stage two to stage three to what well this brass casing would be stage four that goes to the actual nut for the and you know the mast itself then we got nothing we don't have an antenna so be mindful of that I'm not saying adjust that brush, just be very delicate with it when, you, uh, when you're when you doing your, your chore here. And I see now that these are available on, on the bay and so on, and on some car sites. So if you don't want to go through all this hassle, don't. Have it all done for you. It's, it's so easy, it's ridiculous. Anyway, just FYI there. God, I love those horns. I love trains too, did I tell you that? <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> ah, shit. That one's more full of it than me. Thank you. Thank you very little. You gotta meet my wife. Somebody asked me the other day, did you ever meet my wife? And I said, yes, I never did. <laughs> Went right by you, didn't it? All right, so now I can... <laughs> and got me the first time, too. So now I can hold this. And, you know, there's that, you know, there's that, um, don't take this the wrong way, that's six inches that I need. And I'll have it when I install it in my hole here to hold it, to hang on to it, to guide it up and down, to get that, which I prefaced earlier here, started, to get the game going and why then fish the, you know, the cable back up and so on. It's all waiting for me and connect the coax. I'm assured that that brush is coming into great contact because I tuned, tuned into a, an AM station that's far, far away in my area. Anyway, I know it works. That's it. Done. Gone. Okay. And this battery's got personality because I never, I never run this car. But what do we got? If we turn them off, I got this one wired on ignition. I've got it on a 760 station. So I have, I know I've got a good connection. Limit it out nice. If I started the car, I could gain about two and a half, three volts, but then I wouldn't hear myself think, so I'm not gonna do that. I love it. So with some sense of finality, again, you know, to be sure you're you're good and kosher, tune to that distant AM station to prove your worth, so to speak, with regard to your antenna and the brush that I again prefaced earlier and that you're making that contact and everything's working. Whoops. There you are. So I guess easy peasy Japanesey. It's a little involved, but uh, you can do it. I mean, a lift helps. Yeah, it doesn't suck, but there, uh, there basically it is. Okay, thanks for watching.